Hello, my name is William Walker. I'm Chief Technology Officer of Cooler Technology. Today, I'll be going over with you our product overview for the Cooler One Space battery system. Before I really get into the battery side of the discussion, I wanted to talk to you briefly about some key market drivers that have excited the Cooler team and led us on this uh, investment path. The first is that the space economy is growing to greater than one trillion by the 2030s. That growth is driven by the commoditization of commercialized space. Um, some of the key players that are involved there uh, would be the continued dominance of some of your tier one pr private firms, such as SpaceX and Blue Origin. We continue to see participation from your traditional government contract entities, so Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin. We've also seen introduction of new critical players, such as Intuitive Machines, who won the Lunar Rover contract with NASA. And we have countless new and upcoming companies like Starlink, Firefly Space, which is a launch, pr launch provider, Axiom providing space station, and then Vast Aerospace, which is also a space station provider. These space economy trends drive the need for cost-effective energy storage solutions. So of that greater than $1 trillion by the 2030s, we're expecting the battery segment of that market to be about a $25 billion market by 2032. The reality is that these energy storage systems need to be suitable for a commoditization model, which is reducing to seek the overall cost of space exploration by dr drastically decreasing the overall price to entry barrier. Commercialized crew spaceflight is also drastically increasing the need for JSC 20793 Revision D compliant batteries, which are the human spaceflight safety requirements for batteries and energy storage systems. Uh, and they also need those with reduced cost and short delivery timeframes. So in other words, there's an increasing need for a virtually non-existent market offering of an off-the-shelf 20793 rated battery that is ready to go on delivery and is at a commoditized price tag. Balancing that push for reduced costs with mission risk and safety is very difficult uh, for energy storage systems in that if the battery fails, so does the mission. So for Cooler, the scalable Cooler One Space architecture seeks to provide a solution for the rapidly growing market vertical and to be the first off-the-shelf offering of a 20793 rated battery to the market. Without that capability, space design teams requiring batteries must either uh, contract to battery design efforts to expensive third-party firms or to build their own battery team from the ground up and design their own system from the ground up. Cooler seeks to offer a better solution. Historically, Cooler, uh, Cooler's predecessor, ESLI, was a thermal management solutions company. Over the course of the last decade, however, Cooler has taken those technologies, developed new technologies, and onboarded IP that have allowed us to leverage those to be a key player in the, design, in the market for design and development of safe battery systems for aerospace and defense applications. Of recent history, we opened a battery design and testing center in Texas, where we were focused on design and development and testing of lithium-ion battery systems. And in that same year, we also executed an exclusive license of various battery testing technology from NASA. In 2024, this year, we relocated our headquarters to, from our San Diego offices to this new Webster, Texas-based facility. And we also expanded our availability of uh, infrastructure to do battery design, test, and analysis. Now, moving into 2025, we are preparing for the, commercial, for the launch of our commercialized Cooler One Space platform, which we've already used to support a number of our customers. From an engineering perspective, we have what we call our core engineering technology domains that we use to support the, these markets. The first is a specialization in battery design and analysis, where we have industry leading experts who can provide CAD and FEM solutions for nearly any aerospace and defense related uh, energy storage system application. We're focused on 20793 expertise for space batteries and other regulatory uh, bodies, such, uh, requirements coming from other regulatory bodies, such as the DOT, FAA, and NASA. Our team is also segmented to specialize in cell and battery level testing. So whether that be abuse testing, electrical testing, thermal or shock and vibration testing, any environmental testing that's required to certify a system for its uh, operational environment, uh, we specialize in that. The third domain is battery production. This is actually relatively recent. Uh, over the last decade, we developed the capability to design and develop energy storage systems, and then we brought on extensive, uh, comprehensive testing capabilities. Now, over the course of the last 12 months, we've brought on battery production capabilities where we are able to uh, fabricate our own parts, do assembly, and then do final checkout testing uh, prior to delivering a full battery system. 
uh, using one, two, and three, Cooler is able to do uh, all aspects of battery design and delivery. In addition, uh, Cooler continues to support battery transportation and storage uh, with our SafeX uh, safe storage solutions, uh, which are safe containment systems that are designed to contain total propagation, thermal runaway events, and storage and transportation applications. We continue to grow expertise in our uh, in our historical area, which is advanced thermal solutions, where we have PCM heat sinks. Uh, one of our favorite examples is we have a heat sink on Mars River Perseverance on the surface of Mars right now. Additionally, we specialize in rotary system vibration reduction with our Cooler Vibe platform. So a little bit more about the Cooler One space. The Cooler One space is a flight-ready, scalable lithium-ion battery architecture incorporating the latest generation of high-energy density cells in a passively propagation-resistant and flame-arresting package. That's a bit of a mouthful, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. The K1 space, we, we often refer to internally as not just a battery, but rather an architecture. And it's an architecture that is offered in three different series, a 100 series, a 200 series, and a 400 series. Now, depending on the cell that is selected by the customer to go into the series and the capacity of that cell, the capacity of the overall battery pack ranges. So for the 100 series, we're looking at capacities ranging between 86 watt hours and 115 watt hours. For the 200 series, we're looking at between 172 watt hours to 230 watt hours. And then for the larger 400 series, we're looking at between 345 watt hours to 460 watt hours. Um, for this battery, we take a safety first approach. We have a flame arresting and PPR design uh, that is uh, designed with intent to satisfy the most stringent of safety requirements, uh, particularly from, from human space exploration. And uh, that includes, but is not limited to JSC 20793 crew rated vehicle battery safety requirements, and then a recent focus SLS battery safety requirements. Our 400 series uh, referenced above is currently undergoing 20793 qualification testing with a target certification timeline of Q4 of 2024. The Cooler One Space architecture is designed uh, with intent to be customized as well prior to delivery. Uh, so we can do a uh, series and parallel scaling uh, based on your, we can do cell selection. Uh, we can make modifications to the mounting interface. And then of course, we're willing to do electrical and communications interface uh, adjustments. Now, of course, when you implement design changes, there may be a, a an additional level of qualification testing that is required to make sure that that design adjustment is suitable for your application. But nonetheless, the architecture is designed to be customized. What that means is we have rapid cost-effective customization for a fraction of the cost of traditional design cycles for our users that are requiring you know, a level of deviation from the off-the-shelf versions of the K1S architecture. The design and fabrication of all modified components are handled internally at our headquarters in Texas to ensure rapid delivery of high quality uh, and customized space rated energy storage systems. Some of the product differentiation uh, for us comes with safety and performance. So the K1S architecture is PPR and flame arresting out the gate. And so what that means is from day one, you know that there will be no safety related roadblocks. Our cooler customers gain the benefit of combining safety testing that's specific to their use case with all previous safety testing that we've already conducted at Cooler for the Cooler 1S architecture. Um, additionally, we're willing to construct with latest generation of 3.5 to 4.0 amp hour 18650 lithium ion cells, or for users needing some of those three amp hour power cells, we can do that as well. And then of course, we have construction with NASA best practices and recommendations for battery safety design. Again, we're built with intent to satisfy JSC 20793 RevD, even for the batteries that have not yet undergone the qualification campaign. A little bit more on the technical side of the Cooler One space. Uh, so again, uh, it's a passively propagation resistant or PPR design with flame arrestor. Therefore, only smoke would exit the system should a single cell go into thermal runaway. Uh, and the again, the objective is to be the first true off-the-shelf solution of 20793 batteries. Our current focus is on 200 watt hour, 100 watt hour, 200 watt hour, and 400 watt hour series. All of our designs maintain PPR design, sidewall rupture protective tubing, flame arresting ventilation. We construct with NASA Work Construction 37A screen cells and matched lithium ion cells. This is critical to ensuring high quality as well as good performance. Uh, we have centrally installed thermistor. Our vibration and shock profiles uh, go to GEVS profile, SLS, and Vulcan Centaur. Uh, in addition, we have TVAC thresholds right now. Our current customers have pushed us to focus on zero to 40 degrees Celsius, 
uh, which has been based on the environments that they are operating their Cooler One Space systems. Cooler is taking it upon ourselves to increase that window in 2025. Primarily, that will occur when we integrate heaters into the system. From a cell-specific feature perspective, we construct a system with Ampris SA10 cells, which are medium power with high capacity, 2C charge capability, well over 300 cycles. We have Molly cell N35A cells. Uh, these are what's special about these. It's a high energy 18650, but we also have cells that come from a NASA lot with ILA and LAT pedigree, which we can provide that pedigree documentation as part of your purchase. And then lastly, we can construct with the Samsung 30Q as a power cell, 500 cycles, uh, 3C, uh, uh, charge, three to five C charge and discharge capability. Uh, these are also cells that have been identified by NASA for their strategic reserve. Uh, so again, it's a cell of interest already in the space community. The Cooler One Space architecture is compatible with our internal Cooler, uh, Cooler One Space BMS. Uh, we have a non-RAD tolerant version of that BMS uh, for applications where, say, your battery pack will be installed in a fairly protected area. You can go with the lower cost non-RAD tolerant BMS. We also have a radiation tolerant version of the BMS that's ready to go uh, for a little bit more harsh environment or in install locations where you have less protection. Uh, with each K1S purchase without modification, you would receive your battery, operations manual, connector pinout diagrams, all of the test plans and reports that are associated with thermal runaway and abuse testing, electrical performance, TVAC, vibe, and shock. Of course, uh, we provide cell pedigree documentation when you're using the ILA, LAT associated in 35A cells. And for every single battery, you're going to get your work instruction 37A cell screening report. Uh, a little bit more about the 100, uh, 100 series. Uh, again, this is constructed with the Samsung 30Q or the Molly cell M35A or the Ampress 18650 SA10. So the 30Q is a three amp hour power cell, the M35A being a high energy cell and the SA10 uh, from Ampress being a high energy medium power cell constructed with, with silicon anode cells. Uh, the 100 series, again, average of 100 watt hours, it's constructed in a 10 centimeter cubed uh, form factor. So you can use that in a 2U and up cube sat and, and uh, small sat or larger. And, and again, the, uh, the additional details uh, are outlined below. Uh, what you'll see in the details below is that we're relatively consistent on a battery to battery basis. Uh, we want it to be Pretty, we, we, we want users to have uh, expectation when they purchase a Cooler One Space system that whether they get the 100 watt hour, the 200, or the 400, it's all going to be up to snuff with cooler standards. So the 200 series, which you can see depicted to the left, it's uh, roughly double the size of the 100 series. So this has 16 cells, again, the 30Q, the M35A, or the SA10, uh, all with the same pedigree. And then lastly, our Cooler One Space 400 series. This one is receiving uh, probably the heaviest focus of the cooler team's uh, attention right now as it is undergoing its 20793 qualification campaign right now with the Molly Cell M35A. So this variant of the Cooler One Space architecture, we aim to be the first true off-the-shelf offering of a 20793 battery. In addition, because it's already being built for some of our customers, it will have flight heritage. I mentioned earlier a radiation tolerant BMS. We have an in-house BMS that stems from a TI TETA 010931 design uh, that allows us to provide a flight ready space rated solution for your battery that provides eight series strings, GPIO controlled balancing circuit, uh, UART or I2C communication, and then a number of protection features such as under and over voltage protection, external short protection, uh, and then, of course, long duration storage compatibility. So often when we deal with uh, our Artemis mission customers or similar, we, we run into situations where the battery has to be stored in the payload uh, for sometimes two to three months on, uh, on end. And the battery cannot be dead on arrival when, once it arrives in space, of course. And so we have to provide capability for the BMS to go to sleep and wake up to have reduced parasitic draw. Uh, so there are a number of options that are available with the BMS to to pro protect your, your battery from dying in that case. Uh, so that said, uh, a number of our customers will use their own BMS. Some will use the Cooler Rad Tolerant BMS, which we're, we're happy to provide as well. And then the same BMS uh, for areas where you do not necessarily need to pay for the radiation protection or, or radiation tolerant chips. Uh, we have a non-Rad Tolerant version as well that you can purchase at a lower price. 
from a safety performance perspective, uh, we take abuse testing very seriously. So I'll play an example video here for the 200 watt hour abuse test. Again, this is within 35 days cells. You'll see that one cell goes off, nothing but smoke exiting the system. In this particular test, no sparks. This would be a considered a fully successful pass uh, with one consideration, part of a fully successful pass. You have to go through, do a DPA of the battery system, evaluate the neighboring cells, whether or not any of the headers uh, of the neighboring cells to the trigger cell uh, ha had a pop vent, things like that. But from a uh, in-test, real-time in situ perspective, that would be a full pass. Here's an example of our 400 watt hour abuse test example. Again, within 35 days, this is one of our more recent EDU tests. Uh, this was a good test as well. Uh, propagation resistant, no side vents. You, you saw a few sparks come out. Sparks are okay. That would that would be considered a partial pass on that test. Um, and here it's here it is again playing an IR. We didn't have any ignition of our of our gases coming out. What this would mean is in this particular case, we would need to run back to back thermal runaway tests to demonstrate that the sparks do not create an issue. I'd like to talk a little bit more about what positions cooler well to support not just the safe storage solutions for 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 aerospace and defense market, but specifically the the commoditization aspect, the reduced cost, reduced delivery timeframes. And I'd like to do that by focusing just a little bit more on three of our core engineering technology domains, uh, which were the first three: battery design and analysis, cell and battery testing, and battery production. All under one roof at our recently relocated headquarters in Texas, we maintain the ability to do uh, custom battery design with industry leading experts. We have a multitude of computer automated design tools at our disposal, as well as FEM uh, tools. We have our Cooler One architectures that we work from from the get go. So we're, we're never really starting from scratch when we're addressing our customer requests, whether it be a request for a totally custom a boutique battery or a request to modify one of our systems, such as a request to modify the Cooler One space system, we're never starting from scratch. And then from that facility, we support a number of products that allow us to uh, enhance our, our designs as we go, whether that be our rad tolerant BMS, our screen cells, uh, trigger cells and ISED cells, which we use in the triggering of our abuse tests. And then we have a number of thermal runaway cell body heat, heating protection techniques uh, and then thermal runaway ejecta mitigation techniques that we can provide those products all under one roof. From a cell and battery testing perspective, uh, I, I'm not going to read through all of these, but from an abuse testing perspective, electrical testing perspective, and environmental testing perspective, uh, we have an extensive offering already with a rapidly growing roadmap of things that we will be onboarding over the course of 2025 to 2026. What this means is that when working with Cooler, there really is no middleman. The request comes to Cooler, the design is done in-house, the testing is done in-house, and ultimately, the production and fabrication is also done in-house for all of our components. So this has been what something something of a new aspect of engineering for, for Cooler over the last 12 months is the onboarding of everything we need to make every single component that you see in the Cooler One Space battery, uh, precision machining, 3D printing, of course, your standard machine shop capabilities, laser cutting, and then laboratories outfitted for, for pack and module assembly, resistance tab welding, uh, were fully set up uh, for clean room, clean room assembly for some of our space applications. Uh, we can do all of our checkout and acceptance testing internally. And, and then of course, we're doing that in an ISO, uh, ISO 9000 environment. Uh, we have AS9100 in works right now with aim or target of that being in place by December of this year. So when it comes to Cooler One Space, we feel we're ready to say we're ready for flight, whether that be crew-rated orbital missions, crew-rated lo lunar missions, or lower CubeSat or SmallSat missions, the Cooler One Space is ready to go. Thank you very much, and we look forward to speaking with you soon.